How do you listen to welcome back? It's your replacement here. And today I shall be doing a review for you on the Yugoslavia AKM Type 2 bayonet. Um, so this will be part of the historic, historically traditional series. Um, this will be video number four. Um, so yeah, if it's, so this is a Yugoslavian AKM Type 2 bayonet and they are quite hard to find in the UK, especially in pristine condition. This is an unissued one which was very fortunate to find uh, online and which is extremely for itself to find one. It was still in its original wrapper, well not, it wasn't in the original wrapper uh, but it was had the original Cosmin and everything on um, but unfortunately it was not mummified in the um, wax proof paper, the well, oil proof oil paper they used which is a shame. So let's get into um, the stuff about it. So this um, bayonet was used for the 7.62 AKM rifle. Uh, the AKM rifle was, I think, produced in the 1960s because the Kalashnikov, the, the original AK-47, was produced in the 1950s. So the AKM variant or the AK-74, uh, I think, came in the 1960s, 1970s. I'm not too sure about that, but roughly around that time period. What's interesting about the Yugos is, is that they are similar to the East German in which in that they're the only, no, so there's three. They're the, um, they're the only bayonets to have the black hand um, type, the black well, handle and scabbard. Uh, East Germany does this, and so does Egypt. Um, no other um, country who had the a well apart from China, Chinese, but um, these versions with the wire cutter only Egypt. Yugoslavia and East Germany went for the full uh, matte black or the black look. Um, so we have a green retention strap. I'm going to go into a bit more details, but one way, well, two ways you can tell if you're if you're obeying this is Yugoslavian is the frog. So I'm not a big fan of the AKM frog style. At least my favourite ones are the Romanian ones because they're a fully fully secured frog. I hate this dangling system. But it is what it is. So one way you can tell it's Yugoslavian is the thorn on the um, leather frog here. This is a thorn. Is brass, um, brass. Every all the other ones either stain or steel, uh, which is quite cool. And also the Yugoslavians marked their bayonets with a K and a seven, electro penciled into the bayon Oh, the bayonet cutter, the wire cutter. Um, I don't know if they did it on any other examples, but it's always on mine. It's down here. Yugo bayonets have a serial number on the grip and scabbard. Some are electric pencil, um, some aren't. But mainly they are just jotted in, well, as you can see here, imprinted in, uh, compared to the East German ones, which are electric penciled in. This one is 622549, and it matches on the handle here. Six two two five four nine. So we have a green a green retention strap here. Um, a lot like with Russia and with um, East Germany, they went for and Egypt. They went for the uh, canvas strap compared to the leather ones of the Hungarians, the Bulgarians, and the Romanians. Well, let's see it. And. The Yugo Type 2, was well, there's, there's two variants of the Type 2. There's the normal Type 2, which is this one. The no, this is all to do with the um, serial number. So there's a normal Type 2, but with this serial number, there's a three-digit serial number. But then you can get some with the R prefix serial number. So what that means is, just the start of the serial number, it has an R there. Now, it is believed that um, the R prefix on there it symbolises, um, it will indicates that the bayonet's been repaired or reworked on. But that's, there's no evidence to really prove that, but it just is what people believe um, on these, but on the Yugos, which is interesting because I don't think any other AKM bayonet does that. So we're going to go into some specs. So the overall blade length is 5.75 inches or 14. Point sixty six hundred and five centimeters. I've written all these specs from worldbayonets.com. 
um, and just converted them, so that's why they sound, the, the, well, especially in centimetres, they sound so long and minute, it's just to the exact point. Um, so the overall length is 10.625 inches, which is 26.9875 centimetres, so all the 26 centimetres, to be honest, who else is going to minutely check it? Um, the muzzle ring diameter is 0.695 of an inch, which is 1.7653 centimetres. And the belt hanger length, here, yeah, or well the frog, is 3.625 inches, and that's 9.2075 centimetres. Now, with the um, Yugo frogs, they all are a nice light tan colour compared to the East Germans, which have like a grey coating on. This, this, has, this is just pure leather, which is nice to see. And as you can see, it's a very flimsy frog and it's very rattly and I don't really like them whatsoever. Um, but that's just the design of them. Um, similar to the East German um, Type 2 scabbards, they have the bulge here. Uh, the East German wraps around a bit compared to the Yugoslavia. I do not, I'm not sure what that bulge is for, but anyway. We've got two drainage holes, one here, one here. And we have two on the back. On the back we have a in the number two imprinted on there, so I do not know what that means whatsoever. Um, and as I said, the K7 on the wire cutter. No other markings on the bayonet itself. Um, as you can see, he's still. I have oiled these and cleaned these. Um, I had to get all the caked um, cosmoline on there. It was legit, which is all over, and it was horrible to take off. But um, he can just in the candle, but there's still cosmoline in there, and I still monthly always WD-40 up my bayonets just to make sure they don't rust. Um, the bug board, all AK and bayonets, apart from the AK-47 uh, first Kalashnikov bayonets and the Chinese, uh, some Chinese uh, civilian models do not have the wire cutter on, and this was an ingenious idea because instead of carrying wire cutter together, you could have you, know, you just have it on your knife and you can also use it as a bot opener which not the safest thing to do but it can be done um, it's an ingenious idea um, by the Russians because it turned the bayonet into a multi tool rather than just a fighting weapon um, the original saw bayonets basically made your rifle into a spear what's good about these knife bayonets is you can use it for a fighting knife you can use it for a, a multi, uh, survival knife uh, which some people would actually use AK-47 bayonets for because the you can get pick up some relatively cheaply and they're fine, um, perfect to use because that is a very sturdy piece of equipment. The Type Two scabbard is it as I said some sort of plastic polymer. If it's a polymer or is a um, baker like I don't think they are. I think it's just uh, pl a plastic. But the re the Type One scabbard had a rubber insulator on, so you could because it was a metal scabbard, so you could um, cut electrical wire with. But because this is a plastic, it does not conduct electricity whatsoever. So it was a very ingenious thing. Even though it can quite, you can't be a, like a nice metal scabbard. Um, but it was a very um, clever thing to do. And the Russians were the first people to incorporate a, a well, they originally designed the AKM bayonet to incorporate a wire cutter on, and which is why the Americans M9 was it the M8 bayonet they use now. Um, they stole the idea of the Russians because it was a very clever thing to do. The bayonet fits so snugly into the scabbard, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing to look at. Also, I do have to mention that the Yugoslavians do have the um, the saw on the back. I don't really like the saw on them. I don't think it does an excellent, a great job. But there we go. It's still a bit stiff in there because it's. I've tried my best to get out of a cosmoline, but you know. Because it's unissued, it's just going to take a while. Um, so yeah, that's been a quick review of the, well, quick review, but quick, just a show off of the Yugoslavian AKM Type 2 bayonet. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, it'll be much appreciated. Give me more extreme than that, subscribe to my channel, because it'll really help me grow. I have been your one and only host, the Yorkshire Blazeman, and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.